Hello, my name is James. I'm going to go over adding quick sell buttons to cash footprint. Basically, quick sell buttons are a on-screen or on-screen menu of items and tabs that you can use to click on to add items to your transaction. So it's much more efficient than um, looking up an item or a barcode number um, or trying to remember codes by name and that type of thing. So if you don't have a barcode scanner or if you have items that don't have UPC codes, this is a good way to um, use Cash Footprint for those specific items. First thing that we want to do is go to the Manage menu, click on Employees, and then uh, view the Employee screen. We need to make sure that you have adequate permission. So sometimes if you do an upgrade from one version to the next, any new permissions might be disabled. So it's good to double check and make sure we have permissions for this specific issue So or a specific feature. Let's go ahead and double click on your profile or the Manager profile. Click on permissions, and then scroll down and find quick sell button. Uh, allow user to manage quick sell buttons. This option needs to be checked. And if it's not, go ahead and check it or hit select all and then hit save. That's gonna save the employee profile with that particular permission. So you will have access to the manage menu and then quick sell. Go ahead and click on quick sell. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a couple groups or tabs. Uh, go ahead and click on Add Buttons, and then select Add Group. And for this example, we're a software company, so I'll just say I'm going to divide things up into software and hardware. So we'll do software, and then I'll add another button for or another group for hardware. Okay, so as you can see, the selected group has a, a bold border around it, letting me know that that's the selected group. So I want to add items to hardware. I'm going to select hardware or whatever group you have and then click on Add Items. Now there are other options here too. You can add an application shortcut. You can add a website, spacer. Spacers are basically used to give room between buttons and it's just a blank area. Uh, a note, quick note would be something that uh, would be added to an item that's selected within a transaction. I'll show you what that means in a moment. Go through each of these. Uh, we're gonna add an item to the hardware group. I'm just gonna hit search so it'll show everything. And let's just do 987, hit that. If you wanted to select more than one item, you can hold down the control key on your keyboard and select at random. Or if you have like a group in a row, you could select, hold the shift key and then select another one. That would select multiple. I'm just gonna do this particular one here and it adds it to uh, that page or that tab. If I select software, if I wanna add something to that, then I'm gonna do add, let's do add quick note. This is gonna be the button text. So the quick note name is the button text that goes on the button that you're going to be clicking on. So uh, we'll just do test note, hit okay. And now we're gonna put in the text of the button, or I'm sorry, the text of the note that's going to be added to the selected item in the POS grid. That's a mouthful. Um, let's do, this is a test note. And I'll hit okay. So now it creates the button test note, and you can right click on this to change the text. You can change the command, which is the note that's being added. Uh, you can change the color, you can hide the text of the button if you wanted to apply an image. I'm just gonna select an image and I'll add it there. You can fit the button height to the image. And if you have more than one button, it's gonna do kind of a, a Pinterest sort of thing where it will make the height, and you can adjust let me, let me do this. Let me add a couple. So select all those. And you can see that if I reorder, I'm just going to drag this button into position here. Now that they're reordered, you can see how it will sort of do things in a, a grid one more. So it's kind of offset because it's going down, starts a new column, and then down again. You can change how they flow by going to the File menu and then choosing Options. So right now I have the buttons flowing from top to bottom. So they will go down, start a new column, go down, start a new column in that way. By default, it's left to right. So you might see something like this, where it starts in the, the upper left, reads like a book, goes to the right, new line, goes that way. And as you size this, it will resize everything. Uh, so you can see the, the right to left or left to right there. And then top down, I'll just do that again. And you'll see that it does, does that, goes top down. So um there is that 
And then if, what else is in here? We have color. You can change the color of a button. And you can just put whatever color you want in there. Uh, so if you wanted to group items on a particular tab by color, you can do that. You can even change the color of the group itself. So if you wanted to have the color match the button, you can do that. Uh, sometimes folks will use colors to dictate or determine size of an item. So if you have shirts, by example, uh, maybe you'll have uh, green as small, red as medium, blue as large, something like that. Uh, let's see. You can do images like I have shown. You can remove the image if you don't want it there. It will resize, and then we'll have to unhide the text. Uh, you can change the text. So if I want the text of the button to be something else, uh, sample note, you can do that. This does not, when you change the text, so in this particular instance, this is an item. I can change the text of the button, but that does not change the text of the item itself. It is only for display purposes on the button. We can have an item in the grid um, be the last one of that column or row. We right click on it and say start new column or row after this button. Depends on the flow of your items. So, I mean, that was a bad example to do that one. Let's do this one. So now if I come up here and you can see that it's wrapping, but it's also maintaining that start new column. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. What else do we have? We have, let's do, we'll do a new image and we'll choose this dude here. And it's asking me when I'm adding an item, it says, do you want to remove the text? Because we're doing an image, sometimes the text of the button doesn't fit well into the display of the image. So I'm going to say yes. Uh, and then I'm going to fit this so it looks a little better. Uh, and then the image layout, you can have it center. You can have it stretch, which I think is, zoom is probably the default. Um, I chose a square image, so that's... Let's choose a different one. Let's go to that image and we'll do, oh, let's just do something fun like this. Okay, we've got a car in here, that's great. Um, center, and it kind of fills the image. Let's do stretch, and it'll stretch the image taller uh, to fit the button. And zoom, that will just zoom and fit the contents of that entire image in the button. So you can toy around with that all you want. Um, but those are the main features of the button that are available to all of the items. Um, and it will be grayed out if it's not available. So in this case, there's no image. So remove image is grayed out. Um, add image is there if it has an image or if, um, you know, it, it does not have an image. It'll be there. So you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. I'm going to unhide the text. Um, and if you change, like in this case, this is an item. Let's say I want to change this text. I want to get rid of this extra information here and, and then I realize, oh, I, I kind of goofed up. I want that extra information. So I'm gonna right click and then reset text. It'll reset it to the contents of the item itself. So if you go in and adjust the item, it will adjust all this stuff dynamically, um, but you can always go back and, and override it. So that's the that there. Uh, let's see, I think that is it for adding items. Reorder, just check that or select that option. Then you can kind of, you can move groups. You can move buttons. Um, you cannot move it from one group to another. So you would need to delete and then re-add. Um, that will be coming. Let's see. If you want to keep the quick sell form open when you make a selection for point of sale, you can do that. Uh, now that I have some items in here, I'm going to close out of the management screen. And to bring up the main quick sell, you just click on the quick sell icon. <clears throat> and you can dock this on the left-hand side, uh, something like this, and then take cash footprint and just shrink it this way. Uh, so it's running like that. That way you can click on the button. It'll add it to the transaction. In this case, the sample item is a pizza. It'll just add it. And you can remove different columns and stuff too. So if you've got a smaller screen, like a 15-inch screen or something, you can... Go to the terminal tab and remove like the SKU. You can remove extended price or price. Uh, click OK. And that's going to change my grid so it's more visible uh, for everything there. So I've got one item for a total quantity or total price of 18 bucks and then the tax and everything, of course. Uh, a note. Now I mentioned notes. You can double click the description and add a note like that. That'll add it to that particular item. You can add a note to the transaction by using the notes button in the toolbar. Um, I'm going to remove this note so I can show you 
what we're talking about here with the sample note. So I've got an item highlighted. I'm going to click on sample note, and it's going to go ahead and add that note. So if I come in here now, you can see that it says this is a test note, and it added it to that particular item. So um, adding more items. If you do both, you can hit add note, and it'll add it to everything that's selected. Uh, let's see. All these are like assembly items. So they're just going back and referencing the same thing, asking for the pizza information. So that's it for quick sell. There are different page buttons. So if you find that you have more than more than uh, more buttons than fit the page, you'll be able to go page up or page down, scrolling up or down. Uh, let's see. Oh, and the keep quick sell open after selection. So as you've seen, I added these and the, the screen stayed open. But if you don't have a lot of real estate, for cash footprint itself, something like this. Uh, you can bring up the quick sell, choose an item, and then that's, the quick sell screen will go away. And you just keep hitting the quick sell to bring up the touch menu. And you can do that as many times as you need to, and it'll just keep going away. And if you want to keep it back on the screen, all you do is you hit keep on the screen, and then you can choose an item. And uh, it will do what you need to. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. 855 Lot Hill or product.support at lothill.com. Thanks.